Welcome to topic 12.7 Curvelin Motion, Normal and Tangential Components. When we study a particle that moves along a path, which is known, uh, it is often convenient to describe the motion using the normal co components and also the tangential components, uh, which act normal and tangent to the path. At the instant, uh, we consider to have their origin located at the particle. Consider this figure, which a particle moves in a plane along a fixed curve and at a given constant, the position S measured from the point O. This is point O. We now consider a coordinate system that is, has its origin as a fixed point on the curve and in this origin happens to coincide with the location of the particle. The T axis is tangent to the curve at a point and, it, and it is positive in the direction of increasing S. So this will be designated as vector UT. The normal axis is perpendicular to the T axis which its positive sense directed toward the center of the curvature, which is O'. prime. This positive direction, which is always at the concave side of the curve, is designated as the UN. And a curve can be constructed using from a series of differential arc segment DS. The plane contains the normal and tangent axis is referred to as osculating plane and is fixed in the plane of motion. When particles moving, S is a function of time, particles velocity V has direction that is always tangent to the path. Its magnitude is determined by taking the time derivative of the path function s equals to st. Therefore, the vector v equals to the magnitude of the velocity times the unit vector t, where v equals to s dot, which is the position differentiated against time. In terms of acceleration, a particle's acceleration is the time rate of change of velocity. So a, the acceleration equals to v dot, the velocity differentiated against time and equals to v dot times ut plus v times ut dot. A can be written as both tangential and normal component a t u t plus a n u n where a t can be defined using v which is v dot or a t d s equals to v dv and normal components of acceleration is equals to v squared divided by rho. Rho is the arc radius. The magnitude of A can be obtained using Pythagorean theorem. So for the procedure of anal analysis, when the path of the particle is known, we need to establish the set of normal and tangential components that coordinates with fixed origin. When you have a curve, the positive tangent axis acts in the direction of the motion for the tangent. So this is the tangential component. And for the normal component, it's always inside the concave part of the curve. The n and t axis are used for studying the velocity and acceleration of the particle. For the velocity, the particle's velocity is always tangent to the path. The magnitude of the velocity is found from the derivative of the path function. So v equals to s dot or ds over dt. For the tangential acceleration, for the rectilinear motion, we have at equals to v dot and at ds equals to v dv. We are going to use the familiar function that we use for linear kinematics, which is the current s equals to the initial position times the initial velocity times t plus half times constant acceleration times the time taken squared. The current velocity equals to the initial velocity plus the constant acceleration times the time taken and also velocity squared equals to the initial velocity squared times 2 times the constant acceleration times the difference the differential or the distance between the first location to the second location the magnitude of the normal component which is an equals to v squared divided by rho which is the arc radius when the path is expressed as a function we can obtain the radius of the curvature rho at any point of the path using this equation let's look at the example 12.4 when the skier reaches a point A along the parabolic path, he has a speed of 6 meters per second, which is increasing at 2 meters per second. This is basically the acceleration. Determine the direction of his velocity and the direction and magnitude of this acceleration at this instant. Neglect the size of the skier in the calculation. So we need to first establish the coordinate system. So here we can see this is the tangential direction and this is the uh, normal direction and this is the VA, velocity at point A. And this is X equals to 10 and Y equals to 5. And the parabolic path is determined 
using y equals to 1 over 20 x squared. So by definition, the velocity is always directed tangent to the path. Since we have y equals to 1 over 20 x squared, then we can get dy over dx to be 1 over 10 x and at x equals to 10 meters, dy over dx equals to 1. Therefore, at point A, the skewer is basically making an angle of theta equals to 10 minus 1 of 1 and equals to 45 degrees with the x-axis. So with respect to x-axis, we have 45 degrees down. So in this particular point, VA equals to 6 meter per second with 45 degrees down. The acceleration of a particle, or in this case the skier, can be determined with the equation of A equals to V dot UT plus V squared over rho times UN. Based from the clue that we have, it is necessary for us to determine what is the radius of curvature, which is rho. At path A equals to 10 meter, x equals to 5, x equals to 10, and y equals to 5. Using the radius of curvature equation, 1 plus dy over dx squared, 3 over 2, divided by d2y over dx2 in modulus. So when we plug in the values here, we are going to get 1 plus 1 over 10 x to the power of 2. This is 3 over 2. d2y over dx2. This is equals to 1 over 10. Get modulus. So we plug in the x values. And finally, we are going to get rho or the radius of the curvature equals to 28.28 meters. So when we reuse back this equation at the top and plug in the values so we have acceleration at point A equals to V dot U tangential U plus V squared over rho U N so V dot equals to 2 and then this is U T plus V squared equals to 6 squared divided by 28.28 un and the final equation that we are going to have for a equals to 2 tangential u plus 1.273 normal u so this is meter per second per second and based from this value that we have obtained we can calculate the magnitude of the acceleration a equals to 2 meter per second squared plus 1.273 squared Summarize and square root, what we are going to have is 2.37 meter per second per second. In this case, when we try to determine the direction of the skier, if this is t and this is the normal direction and this is the unknown direction a for a and this is going to be 90 degrees and this is going to be 45 degrees, this is psi and in order for us to calculate for psi and use the components of a tangential and normal so psi equals to 10 minus 1 2 divided by 1.273 and we have 57.5 degrees in this case we can determine if this is 45 degrees so we can get the remaining degrees here to be psi or the direction of the oh sorry the remaining to be the direction of the skier we can have the direction equals to 57.5 minus 45 and this is going to be 12.5 degrees.